Welcome to another Craft Roulette process video. This is for episode 152. The project type was Hinge. So cards are Hinge, so I could do that. Or I did pick up these at the dollar store, which are like little Hinge ephemera pieces. These are actually puffy stickers. Um, and then for the color, it is Craft Background, which I just am going to use a craft card and probably going to inset a panel here eventually just to make it a little easier to write on. Um, I may do that and I may do it before sending. Anyway, so hinge, craft background, something out my window, which could be almost anything, but the guess this time was Gina K. So I'm thinking I'm going to use some of her masking magic. This is just sort of like sticker paper, essentially, to do sort of a mask off blended technique. Because I ha picked up at some point in my past these like very springtimey colors. So I'm thinking that. And I had this stamp set. I forget which kit this was from. I think it might be. I don't think it was Valentine's Day, but I think it was another sort of thank you one. So I want to use this piece here. And this is a really small panel, but basically I'm thinking you could sort of ground the actual sentiment piece, like in the corner here, and then you'd have all these florals, which are out one's window often. Now, why did I cut such a small panel? I like big panels, right? Well, the other element was leather or faux leather. So I did this really cool faux leather background technique which there's a whole other video on if you want to watch it, but the short version is it's not hard, but there are a lot of layers of basically uh, paint to deal with. And I didn't have too much warping of this panel because this is also done on uh, watercolor paper. So I think this will be fine just to stick down. Probably this panel I'll have to use some glue on just because this surface is a bit rough. So anyway, oh, and this was a 5x7 card. I cut it down to a 4x6 because of the size of the background panel. But the piece I want to work on first is the sink blending. And this I'm just going to probably do on top of my Misty because it shouldn't be too difficult. The neat part about this uh, masking magic from Gina K, because I keep wanting to call it masking tape, but it's not, is that it's pretty re re uh, reusable, and it's not that tacky, so it's more designed to mask off an area. And I'm trying to get right to the edge here. And then you can peel it off, and it's pretty reusable. Um, it's essentially sticker paper, uh, but probably l relatively low tack. Um, Obviously, I have things like low-tack tape that do a very similar thing. So I'm using this mostly because of Craft Roulette, but I actually had it in my stash. So what I'm going to do is basically mask off these bottom two corners. It's not perfect on this edge, so I'll be a little bit careful. But uh, And I can actually peel it. See how easily that peels off? So I can peel this off and then do it again in a... I'm going to shift this over a little bit because with the uh, side piece, it doesn't really need to be like super perfect because I'm going to cover this with another piece of masking magic. But this stuff is pretty forgiving to work with, especially con compared to tape, which is not so much. And I haven't had these colors open, so we shall see how we like them. Um, I'm sort of mimicking the, a technique that Gina K does a lot, and I think actually did, and actually did do in uh, the Craft Roulette episode, if you want to check that out at some point. But she's famous for doing these pretty, like, very smooth gradients, so we'll see how we do on that. I can get into my ink, of course. There we go. 
you can't you don't have to actually like score these but anyway uh so i'm thinking that i'll use more of the purple on this side and then probably transition into green and into yellow And the other option is we could just do a green and yellow one. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think. Purple would be red and blue. And then green would be blue and yellow. I, I don't think these are going to be exact complements, but here's hoping I am incorrect on the, I am remembering correctly. But I'm going to put down the yellow first just because I feel like I want the yellow more towards the sentiment and the purple kind of away. And we will just come in with a little bit here. And I'm sort of doing heavy by this side, by the side, by the masking magic. And then I'm blending it out a lot lighter. I do have some remnants of brown so this on the card is coming out a little bit more light brown than I was thinking it would but we can do pull in a little green in the middle and then the nice thing about this Bristol is it makes like blending this out pretty easy um, and I don't know this is I'll say this is an organic color currently which I mean I think is totally fine but uh, I'm just going to come in with some purple and then take the purple over the green. Um, it's a little muddy looking. I think I want to redo the blend and just do it without the green in there. I think just a purple and a yellow would look nicer. But we can see how this product works just for giggles. So that's basically what we're going for. So what I want to do is untape these and put this back and... Let's try this again. You kind of want this angle to be correct. So uh, since I uh, was using purple, let's grab some purple and really get this to be purple on the side. And I feel like the Bristol just makes this a lot more forgiving because it's not going to let you like put in too much ink, which is nice. And I mean, like as you can see, this sort of moves around. I tend to be sort of a heavy handed inker, so I don't know. I always feel like I am um, just load up on here and be a little careful to not. Oh, that's nice. So that's pulling in much more of the yellow now. And I'm going to try to not like get a bunch of green on here. And then I'm going to just sort of blend in the center. And sort of blend up a little bit, but and then sort of even blend over a bit. And that blends out pretty nicely. I, I like that a lot better than the first one, so yay. Although also, if you're concerned about such things, a color wheel is a very good uh, tool to have. But I'm going to put these guys back on their backing so that they're available to use in the future. And then here's sort of the peel and reveal, and we get a lot of uh, a lot of color and a lot of white, and you have sort of a nice contrast there. These guys I will put away, and this is sort of the first one. I don't know. I don't, I don't light mind this as much now. This dried down. It's much more organic. So if you like sort of an organic look, we can we can see how we like the actual stamp we're using, and then decide, I think, if there's a, like, way that it makes more sense. So this is the stamp set from 
one of the past Gina K boxes, and it comes with this really phenomenal, huge, some kind of floral thing that uh, we are going to use here. So, we are likely going to want to grab some of the low-tech tape I was talking about and mount this a little bit because it's going to be... We're going to sort of be stamping off of, you know, sort of over stamping where, you know, part of the design goes off of the actual stamp. Do we have option one and option two? I like this blend a lot better, so that's the one I'm going to go with, but obviously any of these work. So I'm just going to try and, like, get this right in the center. Um, normally, I would use the, uh, you know, the magnet here. But the problem is this stamp is so big, it's going to uh, be tricky to do that. So I want to basically get the... What I'm trying to do is, like, line up the edge of this sentiment. Actually, you can see it on negative here. So I want to line up this edge, like this bottom edge with the white part, and then let the leaves and greens and whatnot uh, basically hang off. And I am going to grab... I actually don't have any Gina K inks, oddly, but I'm going to grab my Catherine Poomler Midnight, and oh my, this is a quite a sticky stamp. Um, so I'm just going to go and do that, and then we will... Get a pretty good... I like how that looks. Let's do it again. It's interesting, when I was looking, like, I thought I had a whole bunch of Gina K florals, but a lot of the Gina K florals I have are actually Hero Arts and other people, and they just sort of, like, have the Gina K vibe. So, and that is looking nice. I want to say... This piece might need a little bit more on the sides and then a little bit more on the florals, but this is pretty good. There we are, so I will grab a baby wipe and get a little rid of a little bit of this ink because we're going to come back in and then, you know, put something sort of like a sentiment, in the area that seems to have room for a sentiment. And we have our out-the-window cared for nicely. Uh, I love Gina K's cling stamps are, like, really sticky, even when they're new, so it's really kind of, it really makes it nice to work with. Then you can just sort of line these up with the pattern. And I think I'm going to go with Hello Friend, perhaps. I feel like that's a little more... I mean, there's some other options here that would be good. But I think Hello Friend is the one that I tend to gravitate to the most. Because it's nice. It's a nice, it's a nice sentiment you can use on almost anybody's card. Which I am a fan of. And even new, these are very sticky for picking up ink. And generally, like, if you're doing a... Oh, that looks perfect. I don't think I have to ink that again. Well, I might do the friend part again. Generally, with text, I try and be a little lighter with my touch, just because if you push down too hard, you're going to kind of mangle the font, and then it sort of bleeds and looks not great. So this looks phenomenal. And I'm going to just pick this up, and the tape came off quite nicely. Um, this is actually from Jerry's. We do have a little ink smudgy here, which is too bad, but as someone else said, we can just stick a embellishment over the top of it and no one has to know. Um, so what would work good here? Uh, what do we have? We have the Scrappy Tail stuff. We have... 
Yums. Oh, we have these guys. How would that look if we covered that? Oh, that would look great. Yeah, we can just do a little trio of these embellishments, I think, to just add a little sparkle. I don't always add sparkle, but uh, in this case, I think adding sparkle makes sense. And I will just make sure this is dry, and then we can basically put the card together, and then we will embellishment at the end. So, if we go and grab a one of my favorite ad tech rollers. Whoops! Well, we don't we don't need our embellishment stuck to our card. And I will grab a little. Uh, I'll do a little bit of glue on this guy. Not a lot, but just just a bead because, like, this panel is a little more. I don't know. It's a bit beefy because of the faux techniques. So basically, we want to be semi careful, and I think that looks good. Then we just push it down. And, and the nice thing about this is uh, also, if you have a squeegee, I have many, you can use either like a cricket style squeegee. I'm being a little careful because of the technique on here, but like uh, these squeegees work really nice to sort of make sure that the glue is everywhere. So, so basically the dry adhesive will stick everything down and then the wet adhesive will come in and make it a more permanent bond. This is using the pH neutral glue, so it's really good for gluing paper to paper and that's what we're doing on the back. I probably will switch over to mono now because this is essentially a painted surface, so it is not exactly paper anymore. Brand new. Plus, the mono comes out a little bit fast, so I want to be a little careful with that. So, same deal. Just going to tape this. And the tape also, I mean, I think it's helped me a lot with the warping, too. Because this will be an instantaneous bond. And then, basically, yeah, make sure we have this the right way around. But, basically, when I was very new to card making, it's... The issue is you need a lot less, you need like the least amount of wet glue you possibly can have in most cases. Um, because we want this to bond, but we like, we don't want to have the paper warp from all the, you know, bonding we wanted to do. Uh, here we go. We'll just push this down. And again, like, the tape is instantaneous, and then the mono glue kind of like connect glue or crafty tacky glue. I mean, it's all sort of similar stuff, but strong glue is basically going to take longer to bond. So I'm liking how that's looking. Let us go embellish around our oopsies, because who doesn't enjoy doing that? I'm just going to put an embellishment right there. And then maybe grab one of these smaller ones and hopefully it won't stick to my hand. But we're just going to just sort of make a trio. And then maybe grab more of a mid-size one. Yeah, that looks good. So... That's looking very cute, and I just wanted to go in and see if I want to use these hinges. These are puffy stickers. They're very, very, very puffy stickers, but they have a nice, like, metallic vibe to them, and these are quite sticky. So I think I can just use them in the corners. I might want to put a little bead of glue under this one tab, because, like, this, this center tab of these, like, hinge thingies. Yeah, 
that's with my, I don't know what the correct word is, is going to sort of overhang on to the, uh, the faux leather, and I think that might require a little more sticky than, and we can just sort of remove it, but I think it may, that would require more sticky than the stickers might have, so I'm just going to do, like, opposing corners, I think. And this one I'm going to just come in and do the same thing. I'm going to put a drop of glue and sort of even these up and then wipe off any additional glue that kind of got on my hands. But I don't know, these, these were from Dollar Tree, and I kind of like them. You know, it's sort of nice sort of vintage kind of things. I really like the briefcase. Uh, I don't know, the flasks or medicine bottles or whatever you want to call them are pretty neat too. But I mostly got this because I wanted to at least sort of do a homage to a hinge, even though they're, they're not really hinge they're not hinging physically for the card, but, I mean, they are... Um, Oh, yeah, and these things are, these guys are lifting off. Yeah, these are, these are lifting off, so I think I'm going to have to weight them down. But you get the idea, and thanks for watching this, and I will talk to you guys soon.